Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the 2911 podcast. Future and yours truly, Brian McKithen. And Allie McKithen. My lovely wife. Uh, on this podcast, we're going to tackle a lot of uh, Christian topics, a lot of personal topics, but uh, keeping what the scriptures say in mind and not totally, I don't want to say Bible thumping because a lot of people. No, like I feel, to think I feel like it's Bible thump, but mm-hmm. really taking what God says and just equating it to our lives. Yeah, I kind of like the saying to make it more simple of applying real life situations or looking at real life situations through a biblical lens. There you go. Man, this is long overdue. Uh, <laughs> anyone who follows my wife on TikTok, what well, new lady who really got. I don't understand why any man would follow you, but any any of the women who follow you on TikTok, uh, throughout the years on YouTube, um, various platforms that you have, know that you've talked about this for a while. It's really been on me to find the time to truly sit down and get with you to hammer out these things. But this is the first episode, and the topic of today is going to be goals, correct? I believe so. I feel like it could go any which way. I feel like I'm trying to think of some of the questions that I get often, which is, I don't know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but the questions are repetitive. Because I know we're on goals right now, my mind is, I have some questions, and maybe we can both answer them, hammer hammer these things out. Okay. And then look at it biblically on what our goals are, what kind of goals should you have? Is it necessary to have goals? Things of that course, nature. yeah, definitely. Okay, so goals. Uh, I'm, uh, one of my bosses, the, the plant manager, the big boss, uh, me and him got into a talk one day, and uh, he was asking, not that my other boss, my direct supervisor hasn't ever asked, but he asked me, you know, do you have goals? Like, what is your plan here? And I said, yeah. I said, I have personal goals, but, you know, my goals that I want to see done. And he said, well, how do you do it? Like, what does it look like? I said, it kind of looks like how me and my wife do it. And at the beginning, of every year since we've been married, we do a short-term, a mid-term, and a long-term goal list. We usually break it up into the quarters of the year. Yeah, so I said, you know, this is where I see myself with this company in three months. This is where I see myself with this company for six months to a year. And after this year, going into the next year or following years, this is where I tend to see myself or where I should be. He said, man, that's good. But uh, in our life, within our marriage, we, at the beginning of every year, we are fasting yet again together. But we did sit down right before we started our own fast and we decided we're going to continue goals. So my question to you, my lady, is when I first start telling you about goals, because I would love to believe I'm the one who introduced this into your life. <laughs> <laughs> when I first said, no, we need to sit down and make goals. You can have your own personal goals. I can have my own personal goals. But it's nice to see us have goals together. What did you think when I said we need to set out goals for ourselves? I didn't think much of it honestly because to me it's just like bettering yourself I would have never say I before we met in 2015 no 2016 um I would kind of just be like I wouldn't say lost but definitely unprepared aimed towards going nowhere like of course I would always want to better myself but there were another but there were never any stipulations put in place to be like this is where you should be by this time frame this is where you should be for that time frame so when you it was first suggested I was kind of like man like this is the order that I needed it didn't bother me like it as I've just always known like I want to get better I need to get better and never knew how to do it so whenever you sat down and said it I was like okay someone who's finally on the same mindset as me and I know that sounds funny because like we were married but I feel like we're still learning each other like you I don't know marriage is crazy but yeah it didn't bother me at all okay do you remember any of our first goals that we had together every year up until we bought our house that was always a long-term goal like it 
I feel like our goals always led up to there, but a lot of them were like, okay, let's fix this credit. Let's upgrade this thing in our house. Let's save this much. Okay, now that we've saved this much, this is what we're going to do when we uh, have that money saved. We're going to upgrade this and upgrade that. But I think a very specific one that I have seen come to pass is buying our own home, owning two vehicles, homeschooling our children, and being in a position to help others. Yeah, those... Yeah, those four or five were on the original one. And the only reason why I know that is because that's what we strive every year. Since, since we got married, uh, homeschooling was on our hearts before Ethan ever got in school and before Bryson and King ever were born. Uh, owning two vehicles because at one point in time we both were working and mm-hmm. then we then went to one vehicle. Yeah, and then so to kind of put The two this... vehicle thing was a want. Not even a, a want, but it was a necessity. It was something that we needed. It was a tool, definitely a tool to better our lives. And I think to kind of put this in a biblical perspective, you kind of see a battle between your spiritual mind and your fleshly mind when you're throwing into the society where the man and the woman work because that was originally mm-hmm. why, you know, homeschooling was kind of put on the back burner. Correct. And then God kind of, you know, right, the God in us was... was like, I don't want my kids exposed to certain things. So I'd really like... We, we for sure knew we couldn't afford private school. But, so the next best thing to private school, I, my, my mind has changed on this a little bit, but at that time, the next best thing to private school was homeschooling. And now I think the next yes. best thing to homeschooling is private school. But I think that's why, see, because of what you're saying now, I feel like I have to interject. I think this is why having goals is so important. Because if you don't know where you're trying to get to, or mm-hmm. if you don't have a destiny you're easily more whimsical to fall for anything. Because if we didn't have the goal to, you know, it's on us as parents to groom our children, to be the ones who put truth, knowledge, and love into them. Not from what they see from a TV, a tablet, from the world, or from a friend, or some school, from some school, or some quote-unquote teacher, whatever. The greatest teacher for any child is their parents. Because a child's first teacher is its parents because the child's usually going to emulate whatever they see at the home but had we not had the goal to and there's no knock on anyone who homes homeschools this was something that we felt we needed to do way before covid because mm-hmm. i mean this was like i said this was 2016 on us, on us in 2016 yeah way before you know the, the the transgender thing came out you know and i mean i have family members who mm-hmm. are on that side so i'm not knocking anyone but it was put on our hearts to go a certain route. To shield our children from certain things. And I'm not for, saying it shit. Was really, it was really yeah, to shield our, shield our children from what our trauma was as we were correct. kids. Yeah, that's definitely. Because like, I told you what happened to me when I was a young boy mm-hmm. with a babysitter. What she did to me and my brother. I mean, so, and, and yet again, I, I feel like certain things, because of the environment I lived in, I didn't mm-hmm. have to necessarily go through it. I'm not going to say I had to go through it. But it, it did prep me. For when I became a man, and now I have sons and I have a daughter, so it did. It did show me something that, you know, that's helping me even to this day. But the goal to, you know, trying to stay on topic right now on the goal for uh, homeschooling. Had we decided, you know, what it's just convenient to keep our children in public school. It's just convenient to not take it upon ourselves to teach them. And the I'm, not saying, time I'm not saying no so... other parents don't do this. I'm not saying parents who do the public school thing don't put time and effort into their children. But I've had people at my job recently say, you know, why why don't you put your kids back in school? Why don't you, you know, and I, and I tell them, man, the, the best teacher for them is me. The best investment I could ever have in this world Right now is the time I invest in God, but mostly the time that I invest in my children and in my wife, within my family. If I invest in Ethan loving to make things, learn new words, man, if I give Ethan that that time, that element to, you know, show him, hey, look, your brain is real smart, kid. Let's go do this, 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 this. I'm Mm -hmm. investing my time, my efforts. I'm not saying teachers don't do that. Who better than his own father or his own parental guider? Who's there to show him, like, man, okay, I can do this. Before anyone who can tell him he can't do it, 
I'm gonna be the one to tell them you can do it. Right, and that's probably one of my best, one of my favorite things about homeschool is that when it comes to the extracurriculars, for instance, hobbies or science or anything like that, I get to let them lead that, and which leads them being more intrigued in what they're learning. And then they're like, oh man, like this is like, I have the coolest teacher ever. <laughs> But I completely agree and it's and it's I just want to clear this up. It's not in a sense of controlling your kids or shielding them from everything that happens in the world. Definitely because like not. I said, our because family we our family and who we surround our kids with daily come from all different walks of life, talk yes. all different kinds of ways. So our kids are being exposed. They're being exposed to the world. I think that's the number one comment that I get on TikTok or YouTube whenever people are whenever they see like, oh, I'm homeschooling, they're like, but you need to socialize your kids. And I'm like, what better way to socialize my kid than to be able to go on a grocery run or go on these field trips whenever we want when we could interact and encounter anyone from any type of life and be able to teach them how to respond in certain situations and circumstances. Correct. Rather than being told to sit down, shut up, oh, you're talking, now go to the principal's office and now you're missing out on your education. Like this, uh, we're both 90s kids, um, early 90s, you're almost mid, 93, oh, mm-hmm. no, we're kind of early too. Early 90s, yeah. But um, growing up, we both grew up in public schools and anyone who probably said they were homeschooled when we were... You know, going through middle school, high school, whatever, you ever run into a homeschool kid, you probably thought, oh man, that kid's probably going to be weird. You know? be some and, of the and, smartest people's, people you know. And I, man, I'm so blessed to go to the chapel we go to, but I never thought that because it is truly on the parent or the individuals who are the guardians of these children to put something into them. And I say all that to set myself up to say this. Our children, all of them are on different channels. Bryson learns and studies a different way than Ethan does Mm -hmm. than the way that King does. But I noticed Bryson is bashful. Bryson won't open up, but Ethan goes to talk to anybody. No one would know they're not homeschooled unless we told them. Because Ethan, Mm -hmm. Ethan isn't shy. Ethan will talk to anybody. No, not at all. And I think think what's so funny for me is that people actually compliment how intelligent Ethan is often And then they'll be like, oh, like, where does he go to school? And I'm like, oh, he's homeschooled. And they're like, oh, really? Like, as if homeschool children are supposed to be less less literate than public school children. And really, it's the exact opposite because I'm moving at my child's pace. Homeschooling has allowed him to be able to to ask ask questions. questions and keep digging for answers. And that's what I and that's what I think. I'm going to sound a little bit conspiracy theorist right now, but that's what I think the government and the powers that be here on this earth are afraid of. They're afraid of all these homeschool children learning to ask the questions and the questions being answered. I would say homeschool. I would say people in general. I I, I want to just listen to homeschool. But you're saying you you think that the powers that be don't want people in general to ask the questions of why. Why? And how are, why, why do you want but to But I'm saying it's, it, it comes more so from a fear of those who are choosing to homeschool and teaching their children to homeschool. Because if you're, if you're sending your children to these public government ruled schools, then they're already teaching those kids how to think, talk, act, oh, yeah, and be. Definitely. And so they don't have to too much worry about public school. But then there, yeah, there is still the well, thought yeah. of what about whenever people start asking questions, but if you can train your child up to already ask these questions. See, and this is why I said we can go anywhere because you know me, you bring up a topic, I'm going to run with it. But we're supposed to be sticking to goals. We'll get back to goals, but getting on to what you're saying about the public school, you're correct. Because how easy it was it for everyone to just bring their kids to a school front. We'll teach them. Mm-hmm. Parents, you don't have to worry. Better yet, we'll sell you a dream. Parents, you can have some time away from your children. We'll nurture them. We'll teach them the necessities that they need going through life. And then they can just come back home to you guys at the end of the day. Trying to stay on topic yet again. Uh, It's just, we understood what could be coming down the pike at any given moment. Yet again, I'm not trying to say we had foresight about um, 
COVID or anything like that. We were just thinking. I if, think it's if just revelation. I was gonna if say, the and book I think of revelation is real. I think it's just believing the Bible at a certain point, believing yeah. that the Bible is real, and believing about what it says. Because when you read it, it says darker days are coming. People who are going to be lover of them, lovers of themselves, false teachers. And again, I think that's. I don't know. I think it's All just right. the wisdom that you get though from understanding the word and spending time in Correct. the word and being in your word. Because you can't understand what you don't know, and if you're not willing to learn something to know, you'll never understand. Right. So the goal to homeschool was great. Uh, and better yet, like uh, Martin Luther King Day just passed. So it was Monday, Tuesday, Monday. The 16th. Yeah, Monday. Yeah, Monday. And uh, you asked me a great question. Do you want the kids to know about Martin Luther King? Mm -hmm. And I thought you had asked me, were you good? was it okay for you to teach him? And I was like, yeah, as long as you teach the facts. And you're like, no. I asked, did you want to teach them mm -hmm. about Martin Luther King? I'm like, man, this is great. Because now Ethan's already at the age where he asks the questions. Right. I think like as soon as you came home after the good videos that I did see because they were teaching like, hey, that's not even his real name. Why did he change it? Oh, to kind of put off this facade of being a savior. Correct. And things like that. And like the... The video didn't phrase it like that, but you know, Ethan really sat there and he really absorbed that. And to be able to have the ability to just not have only that constantly drilled into his mind is a part of a bigger goal of raising up these children, which is going to be a forever goal to be able to stand on their own two feet. Lord forbid something happens to us before they're of age to choose that path for themselves. Correct. And uh, so going with the goals. I was telling Ethan on Martin Luther King Day, and he was asking me, you know, well, why did Martin Luther King change his name? You know, why do you say that, that those things aren't true and things of that nature? And I told him, you know, when people see that you're gifted, if you don't have a goal for your gift, people will, there are people who will utilize your gift for themselves. They will utilize you to serve their plight. You will be a, a face of something, maybe even if you don't agree to it, you will be utilized for the greater cause of their good. So, I mean, yet again, this isn't, if anyone wants to know what I'm truly talking about, you can truly look up all of Martin Luther King yourself and find out and they're who the good. man truly yeah. was. But and I'm just good. talking about having goals and, and things in life for my for my children. I told you, man, you're smart, but sometimes people will utilize your skills, your, your smartness to benefit their plight. If you're a well-spoken individual, I can utilize you to get the other ones in line. So that's why I felt, you know, homeschooling was so great because I got to see my kids' gifts and before anyone else was able to pull them out or contort or, you know, utilize them for their own personal gains, I'm able to now push them to become whatever they ought to be as men as that time. So I would say what? is your overall goal with homeschooling like if there's one thing that you're expecting and striving towards for homeschool what would that be well so that would be a short term i'll give you the short term the short term for homeschooling for me is for them to get the basics the reading writing arithmetic understand how to add your money subtract your money utilize money understanding how to read and write that's what man everyone likes to say well you know talk about because I'm quote unquote black, but people will say, you know, I always like to bring up slavery and things of that nature. Well, we're hundreds of years removed from that. What are you doing to benefit your children now? So my short term goal is that make sure they have their reading, writing, and arithmetic things down. Yeah. Correct. And I, and I think it's so funny that you talked today about the money because today we actually happened to go to a used bookstore and Ethan was using his own money that he earned when he was at his biological dad's house. And I you know, I took him and I'm teaching him how to buy things cheaply. So he's like, oh, I want to go buy one toy. And I'm like, well, you could buy one toy or you could buy a bunch of books. He's like, well, then I want to buy a book. And we were at Sam's Club and I was like, you know what, Ethan, don't buy books here. I'm going to teach you how to save some of your money. I'm going to take you to the thrift bookstore. And on Wednesdays, they're buy one get one free and you can get it for like each book for like a dollar or cents and so he ends up getting four books it costs like two dollars and some change he had eight dollars five dollar bill and three ones his total was like 217 and so he's like i don't have 17 cents i said but you can give her three dollars so he gives her three dollars and he's i was like don't walk off because you're gonna get change back you're gonna get some money back because you paid more than what your books were worth and he's like oh you get money back and like these are things for me that I'm so thankful for because like I said there's no better socialization than already teaching your child to socialize as an adult 
And I'm not talking about being in grown folk conversation and business a thing. I know business being in, but to be able to understand how the world works from the very beginning of when your right, child's brain right. is absorbing everything is so important and I would definitely say that's one of my goals too is I think my biggest goal from my kids being in homeschool and what I'm striving towards is for them to never stop asking questions to always seek to always dig because if I can teach them how to do that with everything then when it comes time for me to start teaching them how to do that with the word of God then I know that they're going to keep searching because like the word of God says you know there's false prophets there's people coming out here to basically trick you and stray you away and I want them to be able to ask the hard questions like it took me forever to learn how to ask the hard questions I mean I came out of an abusive relationship where any question was bad and wrong and there was a consequence a negative consequence into going into a church that basically was just like don't worry about anything I'm teaching you everything right and then when I had the questions it was like Shame on you for questioning. Or we'll get back to you with the answer. Right. And so to be able to teach my kids that it is okay to question from a very young age, and if anyone tries to stop your questioning, then they're hiding something, is like the ultimate reward for me with my children. And that's kind of a fine line because, yet again, we're we're young parents. Uh, But you get to a point where you don't want to turn them away from the questioning. But... I've had to yeah, tell but then a couple a, times like, hey, yeah, I, I'm going to give you a five a five question limit right now because I have other things I got to do. Correct. So ask your five questions, and then when those five questions run up, run out, I will let you know when I'm ready for your your other Correct. questions. Correct. And I, and I think that's a great way to do it because we're, we're not perfect parents. Like we're literally, I set parenting goals for myself every single year. Like, okay be easier with your consequences remember their age so while my children are literally smart and intelligent they're not common sense they're still learning how to be humans and i have to remember it's a four-year-old brain no matter where he's at academically right and so i get give myself goals like that for parenting because like i'm not perfect at it okay we're gonna stop yelling just because we're frustrated okay if i'm teaching my kids how to use their words then i need to use my words with them when hey You're being a little loud for mom right now rather than just, hey, be quiet. You know, like I'm learning to say these things and those are just like parenting is hard. But but that's why I'm just saying like all goals are good. But I'm saying that to say with the questions of Ethan and one thing I've learned how to do because like it's one of my goals is like, hey, Ethan, I want to answer your questions right now. I need a break. Go for the next 10 minutes, write your questions down, and then come and ask me. But it is also do as I say. I mean, Correct. I, yeah, yeah, we're not. I'm, I'm, I'm not a sugar coated man. I grew up with right. my, my old school grandmother and, and, and I'm my not old saying father. Our kids are very good at knowing, like, Sometimes what are I good questions you, and what are not. Do as I yeah, say and, right what, now. and what, like, our kids can read a room. Yeah, definitely. Can Especially definitely even. read a room. And so if I say, for instance, the first, ep- it wasn't the first episode, but December 2nd when my dad went to the hospital for the first time and I told the boys, hurry up, get your shoes on, let's go. Any other time, if I said it calmly or, you know, I was kind of trying to get out the house Maybe leisurely, sure can, they'd be like, well, where are we going, mom? Ooh, I can't wait yeah. to go. But they could sense in me there was an emergency. They could sense by the tone of my voice. And I wasn't screaming at them. They could just tell like, okay, mom's not playing. She doesn't have time for the questions. We're not asking nothing. Yes, ma'am. And But that also comes with training your kids too by saying the hard things of like, look, I'm telling you we need to go because something important is happening. I'll explain it when we are getting there. Like, just do it right now. Like, I'm not... But we also reassure our children a lot. Like, I feel like whenever we were kids, there was no reassurance. It was just like, basically... I I don't even know how to say what our parents used to say to us, but it was just basically like, because I said so, because I said so. With our children, it's always been like, okay, look, I can't explain this to you right now, but trust that I'm not going to put you in danger. Trust that I'm not going to hurt you. You know, Ethan knew, okay, right now I can't ask, but when it seems calmer, I'm going to ask. Right. And then it was easier to explain to him because cooler heads prevailed and, okay, look, Ethan, yeah, your grandfather's not in a good place right now. Right now, everything is getting better, but I, we don't know if he's going to get better in the long run. Correct. So then he was like, okay, right, he's still here. I understand that. He's going to be sick for a little bit. I understand that. 
don't know how long he'll be sick. Correct. Okay, well, so then he says, well, maybe we should pray. Or maybe, you know, this is going to be this or that. But uh, sticking on the goals because you keep, you jump me. Uh, so that, that was my short term, uh, you know, just giving them the basics. But within growing, like, I already feel like I know it. Other than Ethan, I feel like I know, okay, other than Ethan and King, I feel like I know what the other boys are going to do. I feel like Bryson's going to do archaeology. Bryson's like his auntie Faith. He's into animals, but he's really into dinosaurs. And Bryson loves history. Mm -hmm. I can see he likes going back and seeing the story unfold. Okay. So I said archaeologists, okay, yeah, I, like, I meant I to say. Paleo, yeah. Paleo something. Yeah, Paleo Paleo dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. yeah. Anyways, I know he loves that. And I mean, and I understand in this time, we're not discovering dinosaurs or anything like that, but I, I say that to say I can lead him to, you know, wondering about ancient civilization. I can get him into uh, mm -hmm. molding him into uh, being an architect, you know, buildings, because things of that nature, because Bryson was our first child who started playing with Legos, playing with the toys, the way that, which is crazy, he played with them the way, I don't want to say the way they ought to be played with, but the way the you common would sense think, way. Yeah, the way yeah. you would think a child would play with a human, a dinosaur, and like a jungle. So I see where Bryson's mind is. He likes, he likes searching things, rebuilding things. So my thing for Bryson would be, okay, you, you might want to, you know, dig up some stuff you know go go the history route build some buildings you know or be a you know a craftsman of itself and that's what i say about brian too brian is very handsy mechanically like i i wouldn't i'd be shocked if brian didn't want to own his own mechanic shop because he loves being outdoors he loves hunting he loves fishing but he loves breaking up cars rebuilding things like that he'll watch you rebuild something mm -hmm. so brian showed me the interest that you know i have an intuitive mind to want to know because i like to smash and break things up i like to hunt but i also like to find a way to rebuild and, and do things like that i wouldn't be surprised if you know he he gets into stuff like that he's very outdoorsy but he loves being you know understanding the mechanical thing hey dad can we build this hey dad how do you how do you build that oh dad can i watch you you know set mm -hmm. the washer up the, the refrigerator up or how how is miss ali doing like even when you're doing the couches or new furniture like oh i, I want to help can i can i get in there and can i help you guys so brian really likes mechanical civil what we call in the military ce civil engineering i can see him being some sort of engineer ethan Ethan's so fast, like I said, because of his smarts. I don't want to push him like people have pushed me. Yeah, you, like you right now, so he's well, like in Brian, no man's land. You ought to be a pastor. So whatever Ethan wants to do, I know I could encourage him to go that route. But I think even Ethan knows yeah. I like so many things. I don't know what I want to do. Yeah, Because like he loves sports because he saw me playing football. Yeah, and it's and it's crazy because it's like every other day he's saying he's going to grow up and be something different. One day, Correct. I'm going to be a police officer. Okay, maybe go for it. I believe you can do it. Okay, one day, I'm going to work where daddy works. Oh, I'm going to do Uber Eats like you, mom. Oh, I'm going to work on the phones like you do, mom. Or it's like it's he, it changes every single day. And it's because he, he learned something and then he's like, okay, I'm into it. But then he learned something new. He's like, okay, but I'm into this. Song. I'm just like, see, that's where. And that's so. That's a great thing about. That's where know, I see the, the creativeness in Ethan. I think he's gonna be a lot like me. Like know exactly what he wants to do, but also have no idea what he wants. To do. Yeah, I, I just don't want him to be a jack of all trades, but a master of none. It is great in that yeah, sticking on the goals. It's great to have a goal to master one thing. It's it's okay to be a jack of all trades. Don't get me wrong. But if you're mastering yeah, pick nothing, at, pick at least one. Pick to something master. to master. Get that thing under your belt, son. Because then you could all, yeah, you're a jack of all trades. But you know this one thing you've mastered will always come back. Because you bear, you you can always put the time in it. You can put the fruits of your labor into it, and you know that you can reap a harvest. It's okay that you know all these other trades. Yeah, okay, cool. But know something, hone it, and grow within that. And then, you know, if you do want to venture off, you know you can always come back to this one thing 
that you know you can you know make dividends or whatever the case may be right and as and as you're saying that it kind of brings us back to the point of why goals are so important yes like you said okay this is what i'm into right now do i want to continue to develop this or is it just going to be like a hobby and you know these are things that we have to teach our kids like i feel like a lot of this is about parenting and goals i don't know why i guess i guess this this yeah because i'm just like it's goals and parenting whatever it's going to be called but it's a lot of these things like my husband was saying is you're right you can't be a jack of all trades and master of none but setting goals kind of helps you become i don't want to say master of yourself because that almost sounds unbiblical no i wouldn't say that because we read in genesis that the men in genesis I, yeah, they had the, jobs they were yeah the way i guess the way i'm trying to say say it is self-control yeah, so you learn how to right. have the self-control, the self-discipline to be able to kind of be who God calls you to be. I don't want to say kind of, to be exactly who God calls you to be. Yes. And for me, raising young men, that is to train them up to know, okay, yes, I do love doing all these things, but which one thing can I do to be the provider and protector of my family? Correct. And that goals. And yeah. that, that, that there in itself is a goal because, like I said, be a master of something. So that when, if time does come, you want to learn something new. Yeah, you can learn this other trade. And if that trade doesn't work out for you, you're not left looking up like, man, I left this place or I left that place. Or I don't have a job. I don't have a way of making funds. You know, now I'm just going to have to go relearn a whole new career field or a whole new trade. You know, if you've mastered this one thing, you say, you know what? Matter of fact, because this individual's coming in my mind right now, Brother Garrett mm-hmm. started off with, you know, garage uh, doors. Mm-hmm. You know, he and, and he mastered it. So, the, but he was like, you know what? I can do this. I know I can do it. I've been doing it, but I want to learn flooring. And so he went into the flooring. But the flooring did not pick up for him the way he envisioned it to pick up for him. He knew, okay, you know what? Flooring isn't for me. I can always go back to doing, you know, garages and put and building, you know, homes or, you know, doing some type of fabrications and things of that nature. So it's not bad to have other trades under your belt. I mean, the more the merrier, but master something before, you know, you just jump job to job. Or So that was kind of my midterm. Understanding what they are great at, what the trades might be, you know, and then, you know, just not pushing them into it, but gearing them for that then job that would be my end within keeping the onus of you know the scriptures because that that was what you said first but i understand their, their kids right now if i show them little bit by little bit by the end they should get and i don't think they really start to see it and get it until their teenage years like when i was with my father you know my my dad if no one knows is a uh, he, he was a deacon at the church that we grew up or that i grew up in and now he's an ordained minister and man I love talking to him because we can talk about anything and then it always ends up by, by, right. by the end of our conversation before we get off the phone, man, we're talking Bible. We're talking something like, hey, yeah. do you see this? Did you read this? Or, Ooh. But, you know, I was so rebellious as a kid, even though I was so rebellious in my ways, my father still remained to have goals for me as, you know, as his son, like, hey, look. I don't know what you're going to do, Brian, but sitting around moping because you did not get that scholarship or sitting around not doing nothing. Yeah, that ain't happening, kid. If you ain't if you ain't with it, you're going to go to a JC. If you ain't trying to go to a JC, you're going to go to school because, I mean, sitting around here and then just, you know, my dad didn't settle for medio- uh, for mediocrity like. This is a song that I don't want no mediocre. That, that was my dad, like, for real, for real. Like, boy, you're not going to just sit here and you know nothing wrong with anyone who has those jobs but you better than that you're not gonna flip no burgers and that was that's great that my dad had those kind of goals set out for me like you can do this but this ain't gonna be who you are understand what i'm saying son yeah you might hate me and not understand me right now but you're not gonna just sit up here and do nothing because nothing is not what we do in this family. But I already had a goal. My my main objective growing up was to get up out their house. And the quickest way for me, since I wasn't going to go to school and who was a military. Right. And so that would lead me to say when you're setting goals, because Brian and I, we had the same goal, only Brian's thought process was a little bit further than mine. And that's why he seemed a little 
more successful than I did when I left high school and I was like, okay, I just need to get out of this house. That was the goal. I had no end game. I had no after plan. And I think so, that, yeah, that said, yeah, yeah I, was, I was like, and I think that's, that's a that. lot to have to have been said within setting goals is that you need to know what happens after this goal is met. So whenever Brian and I set up our goals, we do short term, midterm, and long-term goals. So we start out, okay, what can, what do we know that we can accomplish within the next four months? And then it's like, okay, so once we know that we can accomplish this, then we know that we can accomplish this. And sometimes your first goals are to set you up to accomplish the next set of goals. Yes. It's kind of like an instruction manual. Like you can't get to step two without getting through step one. And that's why it's so good to sit down and write out your goals and think of them realistically. So something like that, for instance, I have one that's great. For instance, was for instance, like one, one, for instance, a realistic goal of mine was okay. I need to lose. I want to lose weight. My ideal weight is X number, but I know so that way I don't get discouraged. I'm not immediately going to say, "Boom, I want to lose 100 pounds in a year." No, I started off small. You know what? I want to lose 50 pounds. Okay, I seen and I have experience that I can do this. Now let's set up the next goal to get me to where I would ideally like to see myself. All of this is comes through wisdom. Like I said, I didn't have this wisdom when I was a young young adult, teenager still basically. You know, this came from getting in line with God and then falling under the headship of someone who was also getting their life in line with God. Do you have bad children? Do you not know what to do? Are you seeking help for getting your children in line with discipline? Melatonin. This is an ad moment for us. Thank you for listening. Proudly sponsored by Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, we had we had to get in to our kids real quick, but uh, I forgot where I, where I was originally at. No, I know where I'm going. Yeah, it was. No, I was going to say it was goals. Step one could be setting yourself up for step right. Two. So to have like an almost like a flow chart, I guess you could say. I wouldn't even say a flow chart. Goals. Like so. When we first got together, our credits were shot. Mm-hmm. Whether that be from our parents in the in past experiences, or our parents running, you know, we're ethnic too. So our parents might have used our social securities when we were kids, or whatever the case may have been. As an adult, as adults and now as parents, and trying to build a better tomorrow for our children, what was the best thing? So before getting new cars or new clothes, jewelry, anything that really wouldn't be substantial to or beneficial, should I say, to our lives. Hey, we want to own a house. Let's clean up our credit right now. Hey, we want this, you know, a new vehicle or furniture or whatever. Well, how about cleaning up the credit that we, or the debt that we have now to set ourselves up for five years? We had a goal to own our house in five years. We met it with three, four we actually hit it right on the five year mark. All right on five year okay, I thought it was four or earlier, but I mean, well, there we go. Even even if we don't hit it earlier or even if you don't hit it within the time frame. I mean it just so happens. Yeah, it's not even so that that goal just disappeared. Right. Because some we I mean it, we're humans. Not everything's gonna flow perfectly. Nothing in life really does ever flow perfectly. Right, but but it was it was a goal that we had and that was a long term goal, but we had to understand, okay, this long-term goal is going to take a lot of work. Let's set ourselves up with these short-term and mid-term goals. What do we need to do? What is it, What does owning a house look like? Is it a credit score requirement? And if it's not, okay, what are the benefits of having a 720 rather than a 505 or, you know, whatever the case may be? You know, okay, this is what, you know, you look at better APRs, you look at better interest, you look at better this, that, the third with having you know 700 okay well what do i need to do to get to the 700 so right and i think that's within the goals you you question yourself like at my job we have this thing we call the five whys you know why did this happen what could have been done to prevent it you know so within like like i said with the goals we we have these goals what do we need to do to get it? You know, what do we need to do to get this goal accomplished? It might be 10 steps you need to do for this one goal. As long as you're striving, like you said, a flow chart, but I don't like saying flow chart because, I mean, flow chart usually means this is what you need to do and it's going to necessarily get you to this point. I want to say, look, these are steps you need to do. And within those steps, you might be on step three for five years. It might not flow the way you want it to do or want it to go. But 
you know, following these steps will get you to some sort of success. And I think a big part of goals is by renewing your mind. Because like I said, I had one goal as an 18 year old and that was get get out of my, my mother's house. But I think had I renewed my mind before I did that. So retraining the way I thought, thought about the deeper things, thought about the what's next, thought about the bigger picture of like, where what is this? The, decision, where's this decision going to place me within the next five years? All of those things really go headstrong into making goals. Like you have to be able to, for one, have the self-control to be able to accomplish your goals. Two, you have to have the right mindset, the right, and I, and I don't want to say motivation because whatever may be starting your motivation can quickly fizzle out and fade out. Like to me, there has to be some kind of emotional feeling behind your goals to keep you striving for that. So for instance, with me and my weight loss, it was like, you know what, I have three children. How is my health affecting me continuing to be there for my children? And so, you know, that kind of really pushed me. And within the home, okay, what can I leave behind for my children when I'm gone? Because I don't want to just leave them with nothing, with, with just debt. Goals are so much more important than just, it's almost setting them up for the, setting the playing field up for the next generation that's after you. I can speak to, uh, you know, I, I really don't like talking about personal goals, but you keep talking about, you know, your personal goal with well, the weight. With, I, 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 I can't I, talk about your personal, like I can't. No, but I'm, 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 I'm going to redirect what you're saying with your goals. And this would be what I show the boys, my, you know, the children as we get older, like we, like Ethan and Bryson always talk about, oh, we, you know, we can't have enough, we can't have that because like if someone says, oh, you want candy? Oh, well, candy has sugar, sugar's bad. Remember, Ethan was going like telling everyone, sugar's bad for you, sugar's bad for you, you can't eat sugar, stop, don't eat sugar, you remember? Uh -huh. But it, it, and then we had to, you know, tone them down, get them like, hey, it, it's the amount of sugar. But getting onto your, what you're saying about, you know, your personal goal within, you know, your weight. It's also this, like the scriptures talk about gluttony, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, having control over yourself and, uh, you know, your appearance as well. I'm not saying the Bible's telling you to look like a, a model or a 10, but you should have some type of self-control. Your, your body is your temple. You should have control over your temple when your temple should be cleaned up and you ought to look a certain way. So how would it be as me, like for me, if I, if I, yet again, not talking down nobody, but if I wasn't healthy, if I was fat, out of shape, the boys would be like, well, it's okay. Cause dad, you don't care about how you look, you know, like, but I, I would love to think because now that you've been talking about it and at least for an image for the boys, they think like, man, my dad has muscles. Oh, my dad's big. He's strong. And all I ever hear every time we go to the gym or get done with the gym, Dad, you're sweaty. I can't wait to be old, old like you and have big <laughs> muscles. I can't wait to start getting muscles. So I do have plans for them when uh, they do get to a certain age to, to work out with them. But I say that about goals, even within your personal goals, like for you, within your, you know, with your appearance, you know, that was one of the first things I told you before we even got married, you know, uh, appearance doesn't mean everything to me because appearances are always subject to change. You can lose however, men, however much amount of weight that you want to and then get into a fatal car accident and then you lose your legs. Am I gonna leave you because you lost your legs now? Like, you know what I mean? Or, you know, you could lose, or I could lose all the weight. I can get as toned as I want to and then I get into a bad chemical burn at my job and now all the muscles, all the looks, the like the, it's it's striving for something, but making sure you understand. It's not everything. Correct, because Jesus wasn't fat. Jesus wasn't gluttonous. He wasn't an uh, overweight individual. And I'm not gonna say he was. Yeah, just, and it kind of goes back to what I was. I'm saying. not gonna say he was just mad skinny either. Right, and it kind of goes. But he kept himself yeah. in good shape. It goes back to what I was saying that whenever it comes to setting goals, achieving goals, it all comes down in the sense to self control. And, 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 and without pride. Yeah. Because if it's easy, I mean, I'll speak for my. It would be easy for myself to have all these muscles look this type of way, tone up. Let's say, let's say this. I get ready for the summer. I'm getting ready for the summer. I start toning up. I go from 15 to like 5% body fat, and then I'm starting to walk around like I'm a man. 
Well, did I do this pride to be the man? Right. Pride goes before destruction. Did I do all of this to, you know, to, to show off and strut? I mean, you, I'm not saying not to have it, a sense of pride within the work that you put in. One should. But are you doing this for self? Is this all for the glory of self? Or are you honing in the gift that God gave you, a talent that God gave you? And I can't wait to, for our first guest to get on here because we might have to revisit this gift thing because... I mean, our brother-in-law, Sergio, that man would be like, man, what's your gift? Be like, what do you like to do? Man, go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Why, why are you sitting around waiting on someone to, you know, put put you put on a battery where in you your can bed, put yourself basically. on? Yeah. yeah, you can feel yourself up. But, so I would have to say. But it's all within the, it's all, it has to be all within the love of God. It has to be all within the means of what God would have for you as well. Because it, ha- it has to be within a purpose. And the purpose has to, I'm going to say it has to be greater than yourself. I believe that it has to be greater than yourself. Because if it's mm-hmm. all for yourself, your legacy, you, if you're only doing it for yourself, you're not even thinking about your loved ones. You're not thinking about your legacy. And like you said, one of our goals from the jump was to help others. No matter what we have in the bank account or what we don't have in the bank account. We ran into times where we got blessed thinking, oh man, we got X, Y, and Z. And God was like, that didn't even for y'all. Y'all about to give that away. Mm-hmm. So don't even get too happy with it because that's going next door or that's going to this individual in the church house. I only blessed you with it to give it away. I can't tell right. you how many times like I, like me learning how to cut hair. I, I picked that back up thinking, okay, but then shoot, recessions came, then uh, 2020 came and then you had three boys and then it was like, shoot, instead of paying $60, $80, $100 to go get haircuts, I can learn how to do this and we can keep this money in our pocket. I mean, you can start going on date nights or, you know, we can start doing X, Y, and Z Yeah, allocating that that money towards other things. Right. So then the goal for me to learn how to cut the boy's hair came up. And, man, that's been a real help to, you know, pick back up the clippers. Because I used to cut my cousin's hairs back in the day. $200 a month on haircuts. That's that's ends. So I would like to know. Not to, before you go. But within that goal. So if it, within that goal of me picking back up the clippers and learning how to cut hair again. What ended up happening was, because we are in the times that we are in, I then blessed other people for, by only charging $10 a haircut rather than people going to get these $30, $20 haircuts. I give out $10 haircuts. And then for the month of December, the Lord was like, this month you're giving out $5 haircuts. For, so whoever needs a haircut, you're going to only cut their hair, their beard, whatever the case may be for 5 bucks. So, yet again, it's, it's good to have goals. And then these people go tell people. And now everyone or some people know me as, you know, Sergio, brother-in-law who cut hair. Or, and, I, I mean, to them, that's who I am. But I am much more than that. But I can see how I'm a blessing t- unto them because I did decide to go ahead and go this route, you know, and learn this tool. And, I mean, most people at my job know I got more than one hustle. Ultimately, I know God is where all my money and all my my financials come through there's so much that i get my hands on and into that i wouldn't necessarily just devote myself to one thing this is why i say be a master of something and then take on other trades before you just become a jack of all trades so if there's one overall tip that you would give for setting goals or accomplishing goals or what to do on the other side of those goals what would it be Make them realistic. Realistic goal setting. And I'm going to get real personal now. When I say make them realistic, so I'm going to say this for men and women. Don't be like, oh, I ain't giving up the draws no more until I'm married. How can you, as an individual who's probably, look, I'm going to say it from both aspects. As a woman, if you have one or two kids, let's say the, the, the father of those children is no longer, whatever the case may be, you think a man who has interest in you is willing to wait until you decide you're married to then and I'm I'm not saying give up the cuckoo to every every individual but if you're going to devote yourself to this one man and this one man is willing to devote himself to you why would you then tell this man to wait until you're ready okay so what about what what in that is about a goal what in that I'm saying make your goals realistic you want to be married. Um, this one man is devoted into. You. Why would you? Why? Why? Even though. So you, are you saying that? So, so, so are you? 
So are you saying not to set that goal as in, oh, I want to get married, but in, to make sure this marriage happens, to kind of force the man's hand, I'm not giving up? Mm-hmm. Okay, you phrased that all around the world than what you were trying to say. I, I felt like I was saying that. All I'm saying is make realistic goals, even even for men. like Even men try to go celibate. Celibacy. Yeah, see. I mean, I try. No, I get what you're saying now. If your goal is to get married, make sure you're not just, going into it with the married. mindset that it's all about sex. Right. Because yeah. because marriage is way greater than sex. Sex is sacred. Sex is a great thing. Make your goals realistic. And understand the goal that you're setting up for yourself. Make sure you understand what you're setting up for yourself. Don't just be like, I want to be a millionaire before I'm 32. And but then you're not nothing. you're not putting any kind of work in to make yourself this quote unquote millionaire. Are you cleaning up any of your bad habits? Are you stop spending money on areas that you shouldn't be spending money in? Are you, are you, you know, investing? investing? Are you, are you yeah. investing in yourself? Are you investing in some some sort of time? And th- but that kind of, yeah. Things? So, so that's, what, that's what I mean when I say just realistic. Saying what, what you were saying, it kind of goes into what I was saying when I said whenever you set goals to do it with a renewed mindset, a realistic mindset to really think about how am I going to accomplish this goal? What am I going to do when I'm done with this goal? And then what's next? Because there should always be a next. There's so many seasons of life. You don't ever, I don't ever want to be stagnant. I don't ever want to be complacent. And I do feel like we're supposed to always be sharpening not only ourselves, but each other as iron sharpens iron. Correct. But do you understand what iron sharpening, iron sharpening iron? one another. In, in a sense. But if I come to you with the truth and the truth of God being that yeah, and, it doesn't feel and, good yeah it's sharpening not gonna feel iron good. is shaving away a part of yourself C- correct so it's gonna be hot because when iron is sharpening one another there's friction mm-hmm. sparks flames heat so i might tell you hey you know this truth and you and, and not my truth understand that but the truth the truth of a situation or some sort and you might not like it but as long as i'm edifying you within the knowledge and showing you not that this is just my own words or you know my own doing but this is thus saith the lord or this is what you ought to be doing because this is what would then lead to success yeah you might not like it and as as i mean that's just the human nature of things sometimes we're not gonna like the new things that we're being told or shown or you know the hardships that we might have to go to to become better if iron is sharpening iron i mean and we understand at the end of the day this is this is what is needed to get done to get us to our destination then hey take the criticism or hey take the take the uh, advice or take the you know the, the new knowledge that's coming upon you yeah it might suck to not be able to party for a little bit not be able to hang out with a certain friend or certain friends for a while but hey you ought to you ought to become okay with isolation and i think that's what a lot of people don't understand within sometimes when you set your goals you're going to become isolated because sometimes your goals are not going to line up with other people and what they think you ought to be doing with your life or what you know what they think you should be doing and not only that but people who see you doing the things that they're afraid to do will start to almost make you feel shameful for giving it not i don't want to say giving in but for striving for better Correct. Can't tell you how many friends. But that's why. I, that's right, why God right, would I, and want I can't, you to be isolated. And I can't, because He knows the negativity that those people are going to be putting on you is going to be a, you know, a, a roadblock. A, a, not a stepping stone, but it's going to be a roadblock for you to even get to the destination. That's why you ought to be okay with being isolated. But goals, goals are needed in one's life because if you don't know where you're going, you're bound to be led anywhere or just drifting. And this life wasn't meant for us to just drift and go by the wayside. That's why having goals for yourself is very, very important. Because then you have the foresight and the knowledge to know what you're going after, what you need to do to get it done. And like we were saying earlier, you know, it's not going to happen and it might not happen as fast or however you want it to go about. But you can see the progression and the growth within your life. By setting goals for yourself, for your children, you know, for, you know, the the other individual that you want in your life. Imagine if, you know, you didn't have goals for the husband or if I didn't have goals for the wife that I wanted to be with. If we were just, 
well, I want this, but you're not setting up boundaries or parameters to make sure that you're, you know, seeking out what you're wanting. Like if I was saying I wanted a godly wife or I wanted a woman who would at least adhere and submit herself to the scriptures, then knowing that she would then submit herself to me and I'm seeking for this woman at a bar, not saying that I mean, anything had happened. But okay, make it even worse. Let's say if I was searching for her in the strip club, what woman in the strip club am I going to find? Fine, that's going to be substantial to what I'm trying to seek. And that goes back to what I was saying about being realistic. You know, if you're saying you want these things, you know, be realistic about how you're going to obtain it and how you're going to go about it. If you know that, you know, there's something that you want, but you have a hindrance in your life, like you you struggle with, I don't know, if you have a struggle with something and that struggle might hinder you from obtaining your goal, learn how to get rid of that thing that is going to prevent you from achieving your goal. Yeah, correct. And I think that just goes to say, to kind of wrap everything up, because this is going to be a long one to edit. It goes into sense, it goes without saying, you know, scripture to base off setting your goals and goals is, would be a good one, is Matthew six thirty three: seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Because when you're seeking the kingdom of God, you're gaining his wisdom, his knowledge, and then he's able to direct your paths. He'll be able to place his desires for you on your heart with the giving you the desire to accomplish those goals. But again, we can't do that without first seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness, because that's a big part. People just think like, oh, let me read my Bible and God's going to give me everything I want. No, there's so many parts to that. But yeah, to sum it up. You can't really be successful at anything without seeking God's kingdom first. You may have temporary success, but to have eternal, lasting success truly comes from seeking the Lord first. And I think the key word there that you said was eternal, because someone could easily come back. Well, look at Elon, look at Bill Gates, look at these. We're not talking carnal success. I mean, yes, in this flesh, it's nice to have nice things every now and again but imagine the average american lives better than i would like to say 60 percent of the world Mm -hmm. you i mean most americans have at least three pairs of shoes maybe i would like to like to say water running water so poverty is what i wouldn't say what you make it to be i mean you could i mean i I didn't know I was poor until yeah, I, was I grew say, up there's definitely and became my different own person. Levels of pro- poverty. Different, especially in America. So, but I, I, what I'm really saying is, and this is why America was always called, you know, the land of the free, the home of the brave, and you can succeed to be whatever you want because of the opportunities, and that's why even to this day the other nations run to America, Babylon, to become and do these things that they want to do, and then they break bondage. From their families back at where they're from but i mean they came and if you look at those families i mean that should be that's probably how i should have probably started this podcast with this episode look at all the foreigners who come to america they come with a goal mm-hmm. they they break generational curses with with and this is carnal minded but you know with the with the poverty that they probably had in their other countries but then they the first thing they do is they obtain, you know, some type of business. The, the next thing they do is they look to invest in their children to then break the curse, to break the bondage of this, this, you know, financial bondage that they might be in. And then from there, the second generation shows the third generation, hey, yes, I went to school, I made it, so can you. You're not going to, you know, make your name off of my name. You're going to do the same thing I did. Pick up your bootstraps, young fella, and get to work. And then these this is how these families own the storefronts, own businesses, and do these things. But, you know, they had a renewing of their mind, like you said, as well. But speaking in the biblical aspect, like we were, like I was trying to uh, sum it all up. I wouldn't, we're wealthy, but we're not overly wealthy. We struggle at time to time. We have a little money. We don't have a little money sometimes. But wealth and success starts within what you allow and perceive yourself to understand. Because if you allow someone else to tell you you're poor because you don't have this, that, and the third. But 
in your own right mind you have the foresight and the knowledge like I'm not poor because I I'm able to put food on the table I I drive a nice car you know and new whether it be a newer car or older car whatever the case may be you you have a running vehicle you know you don't you're not on the corner begging for, for bread or anything like that you start to see the the spiritual blessings that God put in in your life you are the manager or the supervisor or you know whatever at your job you make a steady income you're not begging family members every week to help you pay a bill like those are blessings and then once you start to understand those things you can gain traction by setting up goals for yourself hey do I want to be with this company for X amount of years and if I am maybe I should think about moving up the ladder moving up in in this in this structure and if not I should probably work somewhere where it doesn't feel like work it feels like you know it feels like I want to do this for the rest of my life where work feels like life and not life feels like work because life can be easy life is easy it's just depending on how easy we allow it to be for ourselves it's, it's like I think the hardest thing that we did for me I would like to say it was the goal for understanding like scripturally not to be in bondage with debt. So if we have debt, we ought to pay that debt. And so it's so easy to see it, but then so hard to do like, man, I done finesse Verizon for this little bill. I ain't trying to pay no Verizon bill. Oh, I done finesse the, the cable. I, I don't care about no cable. I got this streaming. Nah, man, maybe I should clean up this or right, on my student loans or whatever the case may be. Now, let me clean this a little bit up, start getting some traction. So then when I do go get this Jeep or this Benz or whatever the case may be, like I'm walking in there with a 720 and people are like, oh man, this dude can walk out the walk out of here right now with nothing down. The first six months is free, no payment, because that's the kind of APR, the kind of interest that he applied or gets with within his credit score. But people only see what they see. They don't see the work that you take to achieve your goal they see your goal they see your goal when you're achieving it they didn't know the steps that you took to achieve those goals but this is why i say goals are very important especially in the christian walk but just in life in general for whoever may come across this it is very very essential to have goals in your life agreed so if I can ask you before we wrap this up, what is your one goal that you want to see come to fruition by the end of 2023? I think in just everything that I do, I would say a huge goal for me would be to be able to have an actual stream of income through social media that just, again, that that's one of those types of goals where it's more so on me. I need to be reaching out to the brands. I need to be making myself recognized instead of waiting to get recognized. And so again, that's just one of those things, one of those goals where it's a realistic goal, but now I have to realistically start putting things into action. Doing the work. Yeah. Because faith without works is dead. And, and I know that some people are like, you're taking that out of context, but... <laughs> No, it, that implies, I mean... <laughs> yeah, it does, and it also implies, too, they will know them by their works, you know. Our works are evidence of our faith, so... Right. But, yeah, I guess that's it for our first episode of 2911 Podcast. And if you're wondering about the name, it's Jeremiah 2911. You know, if God knows his plans for us, and I think it's just kind of ironic that we just so happen to talk about goals. Right. And the, the purpose of our podcast is for you to understand God's plan for your life as well. And like I said, like we said, we're just going to be taking real life situations. Brian and I are not the cookie cutter Christians that you see out here that grew up Christian, never left the church, had the pastors for parents. We are very much the prodigal children. (laughs) Definitely. And we're just here to share a little part of our understanding with those who may be coming out of the prodigal life. And actually, it's crazy. Like, when you told me, when are we going to do this? When are we going to do this? I see, well, what will the first topic be? You're like, well, I was playing goals, but I don't know. You make it seem like goals is a good topic. And I'm like, I just don't see it. It's funny, you just say, you know, 2911, you know what the meaning of all of it was and why mm-hmm. we came up with that. And actually understanding two plus sign is 11, and then 11 
and then understanding that 11 is mind activation and then you kept saying in this podcast you know a renewing of mind renewing of mind so i think 29 11 is going to stick until we probably think of something else but i do like 29 11 especially seeing how this one was about goals and i mean none of this was I wouldn't say it was... It was planned. Yes, it was planned, but... It, the topic was the topic, planned, it was not scripted. Correct. And I just find it so amazing that, you know, 11-11 and 11 is for my activation. That goals was the first the first episode. I can't wait to do a, the next episode. I'll try to... Yeah, you have to come up with the next topic because my oh, idea was goals. So what's our next topic? Just to get the people ready for more. The next topic? Yeah, you said you got it already. So, oh, that's easy. That, no, it's easy to think of one. I didn't say I had oh. one already. Oh, <laughs> okay. I mean, like I said, we. I mean, we gonna get into it. Don't don't get me wrong. We gonna get in because you know a couple of guests that we gonna have. That I mean, they've been telling us once I get this up and rolling, we wanna jump on there. But uh, we definitely gonna get into a lot of good, great, needed topics. Needed topics. We even touch. Uh, Political topics, I believe, will touch a lot of political topics. Political topics, the um, hard questions of sex, why are women abortion, to be submissive. Let's go into the gender roles. All of that, and you know what? Maybe, maybe because of the individual who wants to be the first guest, we might get into a gender role to understand him and his wife, and then us and our wife, and you know, they they're believers. You know, everyone's on a different walk, but they think just as as much alike as we do. So maybe that would be the second one. Maybe, but maybe me and you might just pop back up and have another uh, me and you session. I would love to say I don't know why, but I feel like sex should be a topic too. Definitely because I think a lot of people topic. think Christian. Like, man, we know some Christians, boy. And they get it in just as much as we get it in. Yet again, like I said, we we gonna touch some <laughs> some topics, and y'all gonna be like, nah, they ain't, nah. I believe, yeah, hey, I, I, I believe and, and, in the scripture so leave, heartily. I'll just leave I it mean, here just, to just where listen, I thought if you listen. I was c- coming, and, and this is why I say, you know, we're really here not f- for the not cookie cutter Christians. We're really here for the prod- prodigal sons and the prodigal daughters that kind of straight away and now you're finding your way back to Christ. And I'm going to be vulnerable saying this because we're on the topic of sex and so maybe that one should be our next episode. But to leave this here and leave it where it's at for myself. I don't know if Brian has something to say next. I do. But for me as someone who was coming out of a life full of sin and then like coming into Christ, one of the things that I thought was dang like a sex and not that I had great sex before. Like, I honestly feel like my sex life now is way better than mm-hmm. before. But you didn't. <laughs> you, you you would think, like, dang. And for those of you who are not married, I'm just here to say, you don't got to worry about your sex life being boring. <laughs> I think you just got blessed with the individual God put forth. But uh, <laughs> what I'm going to say about sex is a little snippet getting into where we're going. For anyone to say that, you know, oh, missionaries, what God required or... You know, a man's not supposed to, you know, think of his wife or you can't be that explicit. If you've read the scriptures and seen what Solomon says. Songs of Solomon. Solomon, hey. Not him eating from the garden. (laughs) We, and and if anyone knows that Bible, yes, Solomon had multiple wives, concubines, mistress. Yeah, okay. But, hey, Solomon loved. And I mean, hey, Solomon was getting it in. And anyone who knows their history, there's a lot of freaky men in the Bible. I was going to say, but, his daddy said, mm, right. look at Best Sheba over there. <laughs> right. And, and it's funny, you know, you have to read the, the scripture with some understanding. These, these aren't just... I just voice everyone some in the scriptures. Plain, like, I'm telling you, like, they're just so hood. Like, that's how it, I read the Bible. In Ecclesiastes, <laughs> you know, uh, Solomon says, you know, there's nothing new, new in the, under the sun. People really believe that, you know, with the new lingo, the new oh way of, gosh, like, yes. like we're really a, so far advanced from these men who lived in the, you know, in ancient Kemet or ancient Babylon or all over the world like these people in antiquity weren't they, freaks yeah, like this everyone's they, acting like what we do now is so brand so brand new, new. and it's, it's not. not it's really not i mean solomon was talking about you know her flower you think he talking about a flower 
Right, so we're just going to have to save that because if not, we're going to end up into the whole second episode right now in this episode. Yeah, because I'm ready now. But yeah, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in to 2911 Podcast. Hopefully, I'll figure out how to put some cool tunes on the back end of this. Definitely. And uh, one thing my wife always says, you know, I, I love, love you. you guys, but always remember that Jesus loves you more. And, and that's so true. We'll have our own tagline, but for right now, you know what? I would love to always end with that. You know, we love you guys, but just know that Jesus loves you more. And just, this will probably be our new tagline. Don't think you're too far to follow God. You're never too far. You're never too far. Don't think, I mean, family is going to see this and like, man, you got Brian on. Like, this girl got me cooking now, too. <laughs> Allie's got me to do a lot of my first things, but they like, man, B-Mac didn't Don't change for like real. Don't sound like I you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly... You know your past. I know my. Yeah. Well, we know each other's past, and you know where we both come from. And let the my dad we've done. say it. I thought Allie was never gonna find the Lord. <laughs> right. But honestly, and, and, and true, honestly, and un- with all love, you're never too far from God's love and grace. I mean, all you have to do is seek Him. Seek Him. He's been waiting. He's been knocking at your door. He's been wanting you to answer. You're never too far to truly find God and understand what God's purpose is in your life. So that you might start walking and like my wife always says in her own, know that we do love every everyone who who's ever come in contact with us and anyone who mm-hmm. thinks that we've forgotten them. I man, I have so many people on my heart. My my firstborn, like friends from the military, everyone. Even though I probably haven't talked to you, know that I do love you. I I do love you, but always know that Christ loves you more. And that's, that's just gonna the truth. that's just that's just it. This is the 2911 podcast. And we'll see you guys later. Peace.